Welcome to the E2A Flippers podcast. I'm your host, Steve Rakin, and this show is dedicated to helping you make more money by flipping physical products from eBay to Amazon.com. If that's what you're here to learn, then you're in the right place. So without further ado, let's dive into today's episode. Welcome back, everybody, to the E2A Flippers podcast. In today's episode, we're going to cover how to overcome the three major risks to flipping items from eBay to Amazon. This is from my experience of doing over 12,000 flips from eBay to Amazon over the last year for over a half a million dollars in revenue with over six figures in pure profit. We're going to talk about what are those three risks, how to overcome them easily and effortlessly, how to prevent purchasing counterfeit products on eBay, which is a big, big uh, issue a lot of people deal with and probably one of the number one mistakes that a lot of beginners make. We're going to talk about how to avoid flipping items from eBay to Amazon that have a high risk of uh, getting you an IP complaint. So we're going to talk about what are IP complaints, how to avoid them, the different ways that I avoid getting IP complaints. And this is great, not only for E to A, but online arbitrage, even if you're doing wholesale, thrifting, garage sales. I'm going to talk about how to purchase items from legitimate eBay sellers, because there's a lot of good eBay sellers, but there's also a handful of pretty bad eBay sellers that will scam you, that will get you in trouble if you don't know what you need to know, which we're going to cover in today's podcast. And then a bonus tip is how to make sure you never get banned on Amazon. I'm going to give you guys um, a little tip that I use, and I'm going to share with you how I use my increase of uh, volume. So I there's a strategy that I use to sell a lot more items to be able to increase a certain metric that's going to help you and helps me to not get in trouble if I do make a mistake, which happens in business. So definitely be sure to stick around until the end. But without further ado, let's get into this podcast episode. All right. So let's talk about the three major risks and I'm going to cover each risk and then I'm going to kind of break it down and give you some tips. Okay. So the biggest risk at the end of the day, when it comes to flipping from eBay to Amazon, and this applies to thrift stores, garage sales, if you sell stuff around your house, this is the biggest risk. If you get an IP complaint or if you get a counterfeit complaint, Amazon's going to want an invoice. Okay. They're going to want an invoice from a distributor to prove the authenticity of your products. And like I said, this isn't just eBay to Amazon. This is for you know, selling stuff around your house. If you go to Goodwill, Salvation Armies, if you go to garage sales, if you buy items from flea markets, auctions, so on and so forth, the biggest risk to selling on Amazon is not having an invoice. Because at the end of the day, if you get a counterfeit complaint, if you get an IP complaint, if someone complains and says, hey, I bought this item as new, but they sent me a used item, they're going to want an invoice. And unfortunately, as someone who's thrifting or flipping from eBay to Amazon, all the above, you're not going to be able to provide an invoice. And a lot of people ask, well, what about providing my eBay invoice? Well, Amazon accept that? The answer is for 98% of the time, no. I have heard rumors of people having it accepted that might be due to just getting lucky, having a rep who maybe isn't paying attention or maybe they have to hit a certain quota or whatnot. But for the most part, Amazon's going to want an invoice. Now, what is an invoice? Pretty much an invoice for anyone who's ever gotten ungated. Like for example, if you want to get ungated, maybe with the brand Lego, you can go to lego.com. You could purchase 10 of an item and they'll give you an invoice. So it'll share like your distributor, the quantity of the item that you purchased, um, the title, maybe a little bit more information like the company, you know, address, information, all that good stuff. So essentially Amazon wants an invoice because they want to know, oh, okay, you got a counterfeit. Oh, you got an IP or you, you know, sold an item as, you know, new that the customer is saying that it's used or whatever. They want to know you're buying from a trustworthy distributor. Okay. So they want an invoice from you. Now, the problem with eBay is they, they don't like, they don't like the eBay invoices. Okay. It's the same. If you got like a, maybe a written invoice or something from like a garage sale or a receipt from a thrift store. I think the issue is a lot of times it might not be itemized. Yeah. Uh, the thing is with eBay, it is, I mean, it's only one item, but the problem is they don't know if the item you purchased from eBay, like maybe this DVD set, they don't know who the supplier is. It's just a Joe Schmo random person. So they want, it's, it's kind of like a gray area, right? 
if you get in trouble, they want to make sure that it's real, but it's like, well, if I sell an item from around my house that I've had for 10 years, like I don't have an invoice. I purchased it from a retail store. They don't even want retail store receipts. They want legitimate invoices. So, you know, that's going to be an invoice from a distributor. Um, it's not going to be a written invoice. It's not going to be an e eBay invoice. It's not going to be, you know, a Walmart receipt, whatever they want a legitimate invoice. But you know, the thing is like, what if you don't have an invoice? What happens if you, you know, if you get a counterfeit claim, what are you going to do? Well, we're going to cover all of that, but at least you know what an invoice is. It's just a document that breaks down all the information from a distributor. And if you do get a counterfeit complaint, there's a couple options for what you can do. Okay. So number one, and I've gotten, I think I've gotten maybe two over the last 24 months. And what I did for both of those is I went into my Amazon account and I just acknowledged them. So if you go into the actual case, um, you could acknowledge it. And it's like a little check bar that you check off that essentially says, you know, uh, in simplest terms, you know, uh, I'm not going to do this again, so on and so forth. And, uh, it gets removed from your account. I didn't know that until I, <laughs> I actually learned big shout out to Avery of go to lister. He taught me about that. Now, the thing is, it's still going to stay on your record because I actually got a counterfeit claim for a book that I sold and it wasn't even an eBay to Amazon flip. And I got, I acknowledged it. I removed it from my account. Again, just go into the case and uh, there's a little button you can check off. It'll get removed, but it still stays on the back end. So you definitely don't want to stack up a lot of those, but I feel like not all counterfeit claims are created equally. Like I had gotten one for a DVD when I had first started and it got removed. Like Amazon didn't really care, but then I got one for a book and it was a huge deal. So just be careful with books, um, especially textbooks, you know, definitely we'll, we'll do a whole episode on counterfeit textbooks and different things like that. But pretty much what I do is if I get a counterfeit complaint, I'll just acknowledge it and remove. I won't sell that item again. If, if it's something that I had an issue with and, uh, you can reach out if, if it's a brand, sometimes brands will give you IP complaints. For example, I got one one time from a brand and it was a, uh, an IP in the form of a counterfeit claim. And it was a, uh, they gave me a counterfeit claim without a test buy. So there's test buys where they test it. They do a test. They, they look at it, they do their whole process and they, you know, pretty much authenticate that it's a fake. That actually happened to me with the book. Long story. That was my mistake. But then there was one without a test buy for a DVD. And in that case, I did reach out to the brand. They didn't respond to me. So I just acknowledged it and removed it. So that's another thing that you can typically do. So like I said, if you get an inauthentic claim, a fake, a counterfeit, a bootleg claim, it's very, very serious. So when you're thrifting, hitting garage sales, auctions, flea markets, eBay to Amazon, Facebook to Amazon, like anywhere without a legitimate invoice. And again, I'm going to say it again, a legitimate invoice you have the risk of getting a claim and not being able to prove that it's authentic. Now, a lot of people think, oh, if you get an authentic claim, you're banned, you're instantly gone, you're on thin ice. It's not true um, at all. Now, it depends on your account age and how much volume you're doing. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that um, in a few minutes, but a lot of it has to do with how big your account is. Like I have friends of mine who they've had eight to 10 claims on their account and their account was fine. And then, you know, there's newer people who maybe are brand new. They go gung ho right off, right out the gate. They get a couple and then they get suspended. So, you know, there's a lot to it, but you know, it's your accounts a lot more. It could take more impact than a lot of people think, but again, you're going to have to move at your own risk. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, you know, at the end of the podcast. But the biggest thing you have to keep in mind is you want to be preventative in terms of your actions. Okay. So when you're analyzing items, when you're looking on Keepa, when you're trying to figure out, should I buy this item? And we're going to talk about this. You should be always thinking like, how can I prevent getting a counterfeit claim? Like what are the red flags to look out for? And we're going to talk about the red flags in terms of IP complaints and whatnot, but you always have to be preventative. It's not the same as if you have distributors and you have invoices, because then you could just deal with it when it happens. You don't have invoices flipping from eBay to Amazon. Okay. So you have to be extremely preventative in nature when you're, when you're going about this business, because again, you know, it's, it's the biggest weakness of this business is getting those counterfeits. Okay. So tip number one, let's go into some preventative measures. Stay away from products that are higher risk of being counterfeit. And I want to give two examples right now. Number one, hot selling, current, 
very popular products. So think of maybe like a brand new set of Sony earbuds or some popular headphones or something that's like current, it's in stores, it's popular. Maybe it's like a five to 10,000 rank in electronics or it's a 15 or a 20,000 rank in DVDs or you know maybe it's a board game that's like a 3,000 rank. Like these are hot selling products. Those you have a way higher risk of getting a counterfeit claim of getting an IP complaint, okay? Counterfeit claim, why do you have a higher chance of getting a counterfeit claim? Because the counterfeiters, the bootleggers, they're going after those types of products. And they're so good to the point now where it's actually sometimes really hard to tell if it's real or fake. So for me personally, in my eBay to Amazon business, I stay away from the super hot sellers. I stay away from the items that are flying off the shelf that have the lowest rank. And I know it's counterintuitive to what you would think because as a reseller, you want to go after the hot selling stuff, the things that people are going after that are selling 100, 200, 500, 10,000 times a month. But when you don't have invoices, for me personally, I don't think it's worth the risk. And the friends and the colleagues and the people that I talk to who do have the most counterfeits and IPs on their account, it's because they're they're taking pretty crazy risk going after hot selling items. So I would prefer to flip an old Sony CD player that maybe only sells eight to 10 times a month that's, you know, out of stock, it's discontinued versus selling some, you know, Sony earbuds that are selling 500 to a thousand times a month. And it's extremely hot selling because it's just a higher chance of being a counterfeit product. So that's a really big tip right there. Uh, number two category is important as well. I would say the, the first example of what I said about hot selling versus like discontinued stuff, like that's number one, but certain categories are going to be more risky than others. Like when it comes to CDs and DVDs, DVDs are just way riskier. There's way more counterfeits. I don't even know if people counterfeit CDs, but I know there's tons of fake DVDs out there. So, you know, that category alone is going to have a lot more risk versus maybe CDs or maybe versus board games. It's way easier to counterfeit a DVD versus a board game. Now, let's talk about a couple ways to know if an item has a high chance of being a counterfeit. I'll talk about some of the tall tale signs, okay? Uh, number one, does the deal seem way too good to be true? Is it a hot selling item that's in the store for a hundred bucks right now? And there's an eBay seller that has sold 50 of them in the last month. They have 10 for sale for $20 each and you're gonna 4X your money, 5X your money. That's too good to be true. So you wanna look out for multiple quantities being sold by the eBay seller. Okay, that's a red flag for specific categories. But across the board, if you're new, I would stay away from multiple quantities um, that are available, multiple quantities that have been sold. Does the seller have limited feedback or poor feedback? Maybe they have like an 85% positive feedback on eBay, red flag. You wanna keep that at 98% or above in my opinion. Do they only have two, three, five, ten 10 feedbacks? If so, if they have less than a hundred feedback, go in and take a look. What are they selling? What have they sold before? Do they have a bunch of DVDs that are all hot selling that have a high chance of being counterfeit? You click into them and they all have five, 10 available for sale. Have they sold a whole bunch of them in the past? Those are all red flags. Okay. So when it comes to counterfeits, Stay away from the super hot selling stuff, especially if you're new. Um, you know, be careful with specific categories like DVDs. I mean, I've sold over 5,000 DVDs, probably over 7,000 in the last year. 5,000 was the last time I checked, but you got to be careful. I had a friend of mine who ended up getting in trouble with DVDs. I don't know if he got banned. I think he got his account suspended. Yeah, I don't think he got it banned though, because I think he was actually trying to sell his account down the road. He decided he didn't want to sell on Amazon anymore. So yeah, he must've been suspended, but he was flipping a whole bunch of counterfeit DVDs. And I don't think he was doing it intentionally, but I warned him, don't flip the items that have multiple quantities, multiple sold. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. And he ended up getting in trouble. So be careful with that, with the categories and whatnot. Okay. The multiple quantities available, sold, poor feedback, so on and so forth. Risk number two, okay? Risk number two is IP complaints. Now, essentially an IP complaint is otherwise known as an intellectual property complaint. So this is in a nutshell, um, a way for brands to be able to tattletale on you to Amazon to kick you off the listing because they don't think you have the right to sell or they wanna steal more of the sales. To make a long story short, it's pretty uh, hostile what, what these brands do. Um, a lot of them hire representatives to, sometimes they'll send you like, uh, like threatening letters, they'll send you emails, they'll kick you off the listing, they'll give you IP complaints, they'll do, they'll give you counterfeit claims um, without a test buy. I mean, it's it's a jungle out there. 
my best advice, I just want to cut to the chase. Never sell an item on Amazon unless you do research to make sure you're not going to get an IP complaint. And I want to share three of my top strategies. Number one, IP alert. If you go to rakenprofit.com slash IP alert, I believe you use the code Raken30. I believe that'll take 30% off or 30 bucks off. Um, that's a tool that will essentially give you like a little pop-up warning on the screen that will warn you if the item or the, the brand is known to give IP complaints. To be honest, it's a solid tool, but it lacks a lot of a lot of the resources that I utilize to really be able to be 100% sure using Keepa. So IP alert is good. Number two is the brand on the listing. If the brand is on the listing, stay away from it. Don't flip it. Now, I know there's exceptions to the rule, but again, if the brand's on the listing, by you stealing the buy box and getting the sales, you're taking food off their plate. Be very, very careful if the brand is on the listing. Using SellerRamp, you can check to see who's on the listing. You can check the buy box uh, statistics, the selling history, see who's been on the listing. If there's only been one or two sellers on the listing, you wanna be careful selling that item. I'm telling you, if the brand is on the listing, don't flip it without an invoice. Even if you do have an invoice, you could still get IP complaints. So just be really, really careful. If the brand's on the listing, it's a way higher chance you're gonna get an IP maybe a counterfeit from them. They're going to try to kick you off the listing. Don't sell it. Um, and then on Keepa, Keepa is a Chrome extension. I highly recommend getting the $20 a month plan. Check the price history graph to take a look to see the number of sellers, how many have been on the listing. Um, is there a good history of sellers? Is there a huge spike down? So maybe there's like 10 sellers on the listing. Then all of a sudden you see there was two and then it climbs back up over a month or two up to eight and then boom, down to two or down to one or it was at 50 and all of a sudden it dropped down to two or one seller. That's a clear cut sign that either A, the brand is kicking people off the listing or B, maybe there was like a, like a, a, a gating that had happened and everyone had to like uh, get reapproved to sell it. So maybe everybody got gated. Usually if I see those big cliff drops, I'm staying away from that, from that item. So again, if you don't have invoices, which if you're flipping eBay to Amazon, you're not going to have them. You have to make sure that there's no big risk of getting an IP complaint, checking IP alert, checking Keepa for the drop-offs, making sure the brand's not on a listing. You can check seller ramp with that, but that's the best advice. If you start getting a little ballsy and you start flipping items without checking, I could promise you hundred percent guarantee you're going to start getting IP complaints. And the way it works with IP complaints is it could be one or two that you get if you're a new seller and you could get suspended or, you know, I've had friends who have had 10, 15, 20 of them and they're fine because they're selling 50, 80, a hundred thousand dollars a month. So I would say the more selling history you have, um, the higher your, um, uh, Amazon health rating is if you have, you know, uh, Amazon, uh, well, I'll talk about that. There's an Amazon assurance that they have as well. We'll talk about it at the end, but just don't get risky with that type of stuff. I'm telling you right now, it's the easiest way to get in trouble. And the people who do get in trouble flipping from eBay to Amazon with IPs and counterfeits for the most part, I mean, you can't prevent it hundred percent, even if you follow all these rules, but the people who get in trouble 98% of the time, I'm sure there's some exceptions to the rule. They're not going through this process. And then risk number three, this is probably one of the biggest risks as well with, with this model. It's, it's annoying. You're buying from so many different suppliers. Every time you flip an item from eBay to Amazon, you're buying from a different eBay seller for the most part. So you have to be careful not to get used as new complaints, which means maybe you buy an item that's supposed to be brand new but it's actually used and you get a complaint about this from a customer. So you have to be really, really careful to make sure your items are really new. Are they sealed? Do they have the little seal, um, like the little plastic seal of authentication that it's never been opened? If it has been opened, you know, there's, there's exceptions to the rule with open box. We'll, we'll get into that in another episode, but you have to make sure it's not counterfeit. It's real. They didn't, you know, they didn't just put a sticker on it and replace it with something else. That's why it's so important to check the eBay seller feedback and history and how long have they been around and, you know, taking a look at the pictures and the description and the title and what else are they selling? And you might be thinking, Steve, why the heck are you doing this? If there's so many little nuances, because the margins are insane. That's why we flip eBay to Amazon. It's easy to scale, to find tons of inventory. Uh, the profit margins could be two to three to four times as much as traditional online arbitrage, wholesale, so on and so forth. But with those rewards, 
there's obviously risks involved, right? The risks of counterfeits, the risks of getting an IP complaint, the risks of getting an item as new that's actually used. And, you know, we don't have those invoices. So check the titles, check the descriptions, check the pictures. Um, if you're unsure about something, big shout out to one of my coaching students, Frank, he always takes the time to send them a message. Hey, are you sure this is new? Where did you get it from? I saw a little issue with the picture. Can you tell me about that? Is, you know, is that actually dented or is that a glare? I mean, communicate with these eBay sellers. I know it's time consuming, but the cool thing about eBay to Amazon is you could pick up an item for 50 and flip it for 150. You can pick up an item for 200, flip it for 550. Yes, those, deal, those deals are out there, okay? There's a lot of home runs that you could hit with this model, but there's also a lot of sharks in the water. There are a lot of things that could get you in trouble, okay? So you have to make sure that you're very careful with what you decide to buy and your decisions and you know, is this real? Is this fake? Is it a counterfeit? Um, you know, I talk a lot about this inside of my eBay to Amazon masterclass. You guys can check that out at rakenprofit.com slash E2A masterclass. Um, I dive a lot deeper into this, or you can just hang out here. We'll, we'll make more videos about that. But I can tell you right now, the profits are why everybody's doing this. The margins, the, abil the ability to scale. There's so many opportunities out there. Most people don't know about this. The people who do think, oh, you're going to get kicked off and banned instantly. But it's all about reducing the risk, okay? And if you're thinking, well, what if I buy an item from eBay seller and they say there's no returns? What if they send me an item not described? You could always get your money back by opening a case if you select the option item is not described or if it's counterfeit. But if you say, oh, I don't want to buy or I just didn't want it, I changed my mind, like obviously you're not going to win the case with eBay. Okay. So hopefully that helps to understand some of these major risks flipping from eBay to Amazon. Certainly not all sunshine and rainbows, but let's be honest, every business has the ability to get in trouble or kicked off, or there's always like, there's always something that could happen in any business that can destroy your business. The key is is the reward big enough, which I believe it is with eBay to Amazon flipping? Two, do you have systems and processes in place to mitigate the risk, which check that off. I believe I do. Matter of fact, I'm I'm the proof of the pudding. I've flipped over 12,000 products and I have over 1,200 students who have done this. And to date, I don't really know anybody who's gotten in trouble. Actually, I know one guy recently who got in trouble, but he was doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff and uh, stuff that I never recommend. And some people will take things to a whole nother level and they'll do crazy drop shipping methods and different things that I don't recommend doing. So, um, yeah, let's, let's answer a couple questions before we end this podcast. So a couple common questions I get is, can I sell new and used with eBay to Amazon? So to answer that, yes, but I would recommend if you're a brand new seller, I would start flipping used items first just to build up the trust with Amazon because you do have higher risks of getting IP complaints and counterfeits with new versus used, right? Because it makes sense. Used items, you know, who's going to be selling bootleg used items? Um, they don't sell for as much money, um, you know, plus, you know, how are you going to get an invoice for a used item, right? So that's one of the good things, you know, Amazon's not really, I don't, in my opinion, or at least from my experience, they're not really asking for invoices for used products. I'm sure there still is a risk there, but I would say it's a little less risky, but I sell all new items. If you're wondering, does Steve sell new? Does he sell used? I'm a hundred percent new right now. I stopped selling used quite a while ago. So for me, you know, once you get your volume up and you get your experience up, I would just go, I would go new. I think the profit margins are a lot bigger, but especially if you're a bookseller or even if you just like used, there is a massive, massive, massive opportunity with used items. It just takes more work. You have to condition it and grade it and clean it up. And sometimes you have to do more inspecting and the margins typically aren't as great, but sometimes they're actually way better. It just depends on the niche and the category. So you could sell both, but I would recommend starting with used, maybe your first 30, 60 days, get your volume up, um, you know, get your, uh, get your Amazon health score up, your health rating up, um, and then maybe start looking at new. But I, I personally do new and most, most of the students in the masterclass do new as well. Uh, does more volume help Amazon sellers uh, to take more impact on your account? So this is a great question. So the question essentially is asking, the more I sell and the more history I have, like if I get an IP or a counterfeit complaint, is that going to help my account tank, like, take like 
negative impact. And absolutely, right? I compare it to like, I don't know, maybe a 200 pound man taking a punch to the face versus like a 120 pound man. I'm sure there's exceptions to the rule, but the more you sell, the bigger, the bulkier your account gets, you could take more risk. Now I'm sure there's exceptions to the rule, just like everything I say, but the more you sell your Amazon health rating, your, your AHR score is going to increase. And that's based on volume. Okay. So I actually went on Google and I looked this up. All new Amazon sellers start with a score of 200. That's your Amazon health rating. And over time, you will see a, a score that accurately reflects the account health based on policy adherence and selling activities over the last 180 days. Amazon sellers lose points when you get hit with policy violations associated with the selling selling account. Okay. So that could be like IP complaints, late shipments. That could be um, counterfeits, selling, you know, uh, new items as you, so on and so forth. So the more volume you sell, your account score is going to go up. And a cool thing, this is like a, a bonus little tip I wanted to share with you guys at the end. And this is something that I have is, and, and I'll read this. Um, there's something called Amazon health assurance. Okay. So that's a H a Amazon health assurance. And in order to qualify for this on Amazon, I have this now you need to have a professional account and maintain an Amazon health rating. And again, everyone starts at 200 of 250 or higher for at least six months and have no more than 10 days where your Amazon uh, health rating dropped below 250 and have a valid emergency contact number on file. So those who qualify are automatically enrolled at no additional cost. So the moral of the story is get your volume up so you can get up to a 250 score, maintain that for 180 days, and you're going to get enrolled into the um, Amazon account health assurance benefit program, which essentially means they're not going to just suspend you or kick you off instantly. They're going to actually jump on a phone call with you. And that actually happened to me when I sold a counterfeit textbook accidentally. I made a whole video about this. But um, you want to get enrolled into that program because then you know you're not going to just instantly get banned. They're going to call you. They're going to work with you. And that's exactly what happened to me. So get your volume up. Start with use. Then maybe move to new. Um, keep selling more. Build up your history. Get to 250 uh, Amazon health rating. Maintain that for 180 days. And then you'll get your um, Amazon account health assurance, which adds a, lever, a, a layer of protection to your account. So hopefully this helps you to understand the three major risks of flipping items from eBay to Amazon, how to overcome those. And hopefully, you know, this video or this podcast episode, this, the video is actually on YouTube as well, helps you. I'm still getting the flow of podcasting right now. So like I'm used to, you know, looking at the camera for the folks watching on YouTube, but I'm also looking down. So give me a few months to get the hang of things, but this is fun. I'm really, really enjoying this. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, do me a big favor and go over and uh, leave a feedback. I would love you to leave an honest feedback to help spread the word of this podcast. I think right now we have one rating <laughs> by myself. Um, but for anyone who enjoyed this or you want more episodes, leave a rating over on Apple or on Google Podcasts um, to help spread the word. And I just want to say thank you guys so much. Appreciate you all listening and watching. And we'll see you next week for episode number three. Much love. Bye.